Hi, I'm Sabelle Pascal, and I'm going to be baking another yummy recipe today out of my new cookbook, The Allergen-Free Baker's Handbook, which is a cookbook to teach people how to bake without gluten, wheat, dairy, soy, eggs, tree nuts, peanuts, and sesame. So today what we're going to be making is cherry oat scones. Thanks to the advent of gluten-free oats, now even people on gluten-free diets can enjoy these types of scones. This is a really great uh, tip for people learning to bake without dairy, is how to sour milk. And so what I do is I add about a tablespoon of cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar, which is a gluten-free vinegar, to rice milk, which is a great substitute for cow's milk or soy milk. So that's our first step. So I've already measured this out. This is two cups of basic gluten-free flour mix. So the first thing I'm going to add is xanthan gum, which is a really key ingredient when you're doing gluten-free baking. It helps to um, provide the structure that is generally found in gluten-containing flours like wheat flour. This is two tablespoons of double-acting baking powder, which I'm, I'm using to help with the, the rise because we're baking without eggs. Third of a cup of just plain old granulated white sugar. Put that in, stir it up. Quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and then this delicious mm, cinnamon, which I always love cinnamon in my scones. We're going to add these gluten-free oats. This is a fantastic new product, and there's quite a few manufacturers of this. A lot of people are jumping on the gluten-free oat bandwagon because oats are a very nutritious grain for people on gluten-free diets to eat. So next we're going to be adding another fantastic substitute in allergen-free baking, which is a dairy-free, soy-free shortening. This is a third of a cup of shortening, so you cut it in, and you can either use just two butter knives to cut it in until you have a nice crumb. I'm using what's called a pastry blender, which you can get for a couple of dollars at most kitchen supply stores. So what we want to do is we want to get this so that there's a nice pea-sized crumb. This is actually pretty good now. I'm ready to toss in my, my fruit, my dried fruit. I'm using a combination of dried cherries and dried cranberries because I had run out of my cherries. But basically you can use any kind of dried fruit in these scones and it'll be delicious. So I'm going to mix that in. Just stir it in a little bit. And the last step of this is to add the liquid ingredients, our buttermilk, to the dry ingredients. You want it combined but still clumpy. Like you don't want to try to get a smooth dough here. The scones are, are very simple but they seem fancy and nobody has to know that it took you all of about 10 minutes. So I'm actually going to turn this out and divide it into two balls. I'm going to flour them a little bit so they don't stick too much. Ooh, this smells so good already. So I'm going to pat these into two discs, and then we are going to cut them into six wedges, like that are pie-shaped wedges. If it's not a perfect shape, who cares? So now we're going to transfer them to a parchment-lined baking tray, and then I'm going to brush the tops with rice milk and sprinkle them with a little bit of um, sanding sugar just to make them pretty. The sugars in the rice milk actually they kind of like caramelize a little bit and they create this lovely golden topping. And we are good to go. So I've preheated the oven to 400 degrees and what you're going to do is you're going to bake them on the center rack for about 17 minutes until they're slightly golden brown on the top. They're going to smell ready. At around 17 minutes you're going to start getting that delicious scent of cinnamon and oats and cherries. So I'm going to stick them in. And now all we have to do is wait. So these smell about ready. And they're starting, yeah, they're getting nice and golden on top. So these, these puppies are ready. And as you can see, there's this lovely sort of golden top and the sugar is all crystallized and they are just perfect. And there you have it. You can have them plain with vegan butter or you can put some jam or some honey or whatever you like. But I like them hot straight out of the oven, just like this. Mm, so good. Now, if you like this recipe, there are 99 others where it came from. My new cookbook, The Allergen-Free Baker's Handbook. Remember, 
As you can see from this delicious cherry oat scone, it's not about what you can't eat, it's about what you can. I really do eat these foods. <laughs> A lot.